Hi, I'm Rick Keeler. Thanks for joining me. A few weeks ago, I talked about the increasing use of the term investor class as an inaccurate and I think generally disparaging synonym for the rich. The same day I wrote that piece, a reader sent me an article by Christopher Ingram that appeared in the December 7, 2017 Washington Post. It was titled, Economy is Creating Millionaires at an Astonishing Pace, but what's it doing for everyone else? In that article, he refers to another group that he calls the millionaire class. Ingram references a paper issued in November 2017 by New York University economist Edward N. Wolf, and in that he finds the number of households with a net worth of $1 million, and that's measured in 1995 dollars, increased from 2.4 million households in 83 to 9.1 million in 2016, which is a growth of almost three times. The total number of households increased by 50% during this period, meaning the number of millionaires increased at over five times the rate of the overall population. Now keep in mind that all these numbers refer to, or not to income, but to net worth, the total value of a household's assets, which includes retirement accounts, homes, other property, less debts. Wolf notes in his study that the bulk of the increase in the number of millionaire households happened between 1995 and 2001. Now, that was 17 years ago. And it was due directly to the run-up in stock prices in the dot-com craze of 2000. He notes that more recently, the increases in real estate values has nudged the number of millionaires um, household up a bit. But the bulk of it was uh, between that time period of 95 and 2001. Ingram writes that in 1983, fewer than 3% of households had a net worth greater than $1 million or more in constant $1995. But by 2016, over 7% of households were worth that much, over two times. His take is that the creation of all these new millionaires is more of what's wrong with America. I think that there's maybe another way to view this. Ingram refers to data from the Pew Research Center that finds the middle class is shrinking while the lower middle class and poor is increasing, in fact, by 4%, he finds. Then he uses this as evidence of increasing income inequality as the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. Now, confusingly, data that I found and reported on in August of 2016 finds just the opposite. According to a study by Stephen Rose with the Urban Institute, between 1979 and 2014, every class of American, uh, or every class in America, becomes wealthier. The upper middle class, which is households earning between 100,000 and 350,000, increased from 13% to almost 30%. The poor, Households earning under 30,000 decreased from 24% to about 20%. It isn't astounding news that people who invest in stocks and real estate increase their wealth faster than those who don't. These are the two asset classes that have the highest returns over almost any lengthy period of time. If you want to build wealth, you first need to be frugal, that is, have the ability to save money to invest, and then you need to invest in either big
businesses, which would be stocks, or real estate. Anyone with a few hundred dollars can own a slice of hundreds of the same stocks and real estate properties owned by the rich. Starting small and investing modest but consistent amounts over time is the way that many people build wealth until they do indeed accumulate a net worth of a million dollars. This is a sign of something wrong. It is an achievement worth celebrating. So it seems to me all the reference to investor classes or millionaire classes is an attempt to shame and demagogue the uber rich. However, using these terms also shames everyday Americans who take pride in being responsible for their financial future and who take advantage of opportunities to provide security for it. Thanks for listening.